So we have learned a little bit about the if statement here. We learned that it holds true or it holds a boolean value here inside these little parentheses. This this and the space between these parentheses is called a parameter here. That's not important. So it holds either true or false here, and we can choose to execute certain pieces of code based on whether the value is true or false. So in this, in this case, if it's false, it'll skip that value. If it's true, it'll still execute the code inside the braces here, which is, this is called a code block. Code inside the braces will be called code block, a code block. All right, so let, let's start from the beginning again. We already know that we can output a boolean. Now, if it's true, it'll be considered a one. Else, if it's false, it'll be considered a zero here. And to remind us here that if this is zero, if we set boolean equal to zero here, it's going to be false here because it outputs a zero. If we set it equal to anything that's not zero, it'll be true. So as long as it's not zero, it'll be true. Now we're going to learn some relational operators. Now let's say, uh, so first we're going to learn the uh, greater than operator. It's three greater than two. So you might have a pretty good idea of what the four, the other four are. If not, just wait a couple more minutes here. So, is this a true statement? I'm going to put this in parentheses here, just to avoid the confusion, because this equal sign here might confuse some people here, and it's understandable why. But keep in mind, it's still not algebra here. This equal sign is uh, has special properties in C++. The left hand side, whatever's on the left hand side, may have completely different properties than the right hand side. I've discussed that in earlier tutorials. But moving on, is this a true statement? Is 3 greater than 2? It's true. So this boolean will output a true, a 1 for being true. What if I use the less than operator? Well, that's going to be false. 3 is not less than 2. OK. What if I made these the same? What if I made this 3? Is 3 less than 3? That's a false. 3 is not less than 3. Now, what we can do, well, let's say I made this a 5 here. Is this a true statement? This is true here. Now, let's go back to 3 here. Now, what if I made this less than or equal to here? Is 3 less than or equal to 3? That is a true statement, because 3 equals 3, so that is less than or equal to 3 here. We can also see if it's greater than or equal to 3. That'll also be a true statement here. Now right here, the less than, when we use this relational operator here, it requires two pieces. It requires the greater than sign and the equal than sign. It will not be equal to or greater than. That's not the syntax for C++. If you forget which way it goes, it's really simple you'll get red squigglies if you're using the greater than or equal to sign or equal to greater than sign here so you, then you can just switch it then notice all the red squigglies go away when you get it right here so if you forget just try typing one in and if it doesn't work you just switch it so the less than piece is going to be on the left and the other one is going to be on the right so let's see if this 5 is greater than or equal to 3 well that's a true statement because 5 is just greater than 3 Okay. Now, what if uh, we want to compare to see if they're equal to each other? Is 5 equal to 3? We do not just use the equal then sign. Because that's, remember, that's an assignment operator. In this case, we're trying to assign 3 to the value of 5, which is not possible. And we are not allowed to, to try and do that. So the comparative equal sign is going to be two equal signs back to back. That's how we can compare. If, that's how we can use this comparative operator. Does 5 equal 3? Well, this should be a zero because it's false. Now, what if we did five equals five? Mm 
Well, that's a true statement because 5 does equal 5. Does, let's say does 7 equal 5. Well, that's not true. That's false. 7 does not equal 5 here. Now, the final, so we learned 5 operators here. Less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. And we also just learned the equal to operator. Now, keep in mind, there's when you use the equal to operator, it's going to be two equal signs here. Now, the final relational operator is the not equal to. Is 7 not equal to 5? Well, that's true. Because 7 does not equal 5, so that's a true statement. So we output true to the screen, which is the 1. Now what about this? What if I made this the 7 not 7? That sounds funny. Is 7 not equal to 7? That's actually a, it's a false statement because 7 does equal 7. We're trying to compare and see if they're not equal to each other. In this case, that's false. So we have 7 relational operators. And that's 6 relational operators. I saw the number 7. Okay. And that's how we can compare certain things here. So let's go back to this if statement here. If I said if boolean here, I want to output this is true to the screen. It's a zero. Well, it's because this is a false statement. It will not execute this piece of code here. Now I want to delete this here. Because I'm done with it. What if I made this equal here? Well, that's a true statement. We already figured that out. And it'll output this is true to the screen here. So remember that the if statement will execute everything inside these braces here if it's true. Now, if it's false, it'll skip everything inside that brace here. The 6 equal to 7? No, that's a false statement. And it doesn't print anything to the screen because it just skips this code here. So we can. We already learned that we can skip certain pieces of code depending on the condition here. So let's use this in an example here. Let's say we write a simple program. Okay, well this is already a program. Let's write a different program here. I want to make two variables here. INT apples and oranges. Now I want to use bananas. Okay. Now I want to get rid of this boolean piece here. Now this one here, I want to say apples less than bananas. We can, can put our com we can put our comparative operators in here because remember this is a boolean statement here, so we can put it in. And we'll say if this is true here, we'll say I'll just type in more bananas. There are more bananas. And then I want to put the same thing down here, but I want to change this to greater than here. Then I want to say this is apples here. So either one's going to be true or the other, right? Depending on what I set these equal to. Well, not necessarily here, but first let's output. Enter the number of bananas. And I put a space here. And we'll input bananas here. Then I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to copy and paste here. Enter the number of apples. So let's look at this here. We made two variables, apples and bananas here. Now let's run this here. Let's say I entered seven bananas and five apples. And I forgot to pause it. Because remember this cin.get does not work with the uh, when we, we use the cin got operators here. The cin doesn't work here. So we're going to be using the system pause here. 
So I'm just going to output a new line here, and then system, and then pause. And then we're going to end it with a semicolon. And there's another banana, 7, 5. It says there are more bananas here. Well, let's see what happened here. When I entered 7 for bananas here, because first it says, enter the number of bananas here. Now, when I got to that first statement here, so first we read these first two, we read this here, the, the, the uh, computer made two variables. Then if you print, enter the number of bananas on the screen here. Now the compiler right now is stuck to the screen here. It's waiting for me to enter something for bananas here. So we entered 7 here. Now I'm going to enter the number of apples here. Let's say enter 9. Now it's going to check to see if this is true here. It's uh, 7 less than 9. I'm sorry. Is a 9 less than 7 here because it's looking at the apples here. I entered 9 for the apples. 9 is apples and 7 is bananas here. Well, that's false. So we skip this entire code here. Now we only execute the one that's true. In this case, 9 is greater than 7. So it, it executes everything in here because it's a true statement here. And we've already seen it, me do it the other way around. Let's say there's more bananas, 9, and then 2. There are more bananas. What if I made them equal to each other? Let's say there's 2 and then 2. Well, neither one of those statements are true, right? So it won't print any of that to the screen. Because it skips them both here. And then if I made them, if I use the equal to here, and I made them equal to each other, and then they'd, it would print out both of them on the same line. One, one. There are more bananas, there are more apples here. Because in this case, both of these statements are true, so it executes both pieces of code. So that's a, that's a start on the, uh, so on the, for the booleans here, so we're starting to be able to have a little bit more power with our programs here. So the program will do something different depending on what the user does. So if I enter two different values, depending on what I do, the program will execute certain pieces of code. So we're starting to um, get into some logical programming here. Here we have uh, variability in our program. So if this makes sense, keep on moving on. And uh, try to uh, come up with your own problems here. Try to practice it on your own. And I'll be posting um, some practice exercises just to help you get started here. And I'll be posting There'll be little links on the bottom here that'll link you to link you to that to the video that um, gives you some exercises to write your own code to think on your own, and I'll post the solutions at the end of the videos, or I'll post them in the the next video after that. But there'll be links to it. They'll be really easy to find. Okay, so that wraps it up, and um, I'll see you in the next tutorial.